Hey guys, I'm Tyler and welcome back. As many of you probably know, I am an engineer during the day, so I stare at some gray cubicle walls, which is very, very exciting. And it's even more exciting in the dead of winter when it's just nasty miserable up here in Michigan. So I am going to be spicing up my cube this winter, and this is the first project that's gonna happen. So I got a couple pretty sweet slabs of cherry from my buddy Matt here in Michigan, and I wanna turn this into a type of lamp. This is not gonna be a lamp that lights up the area. It's gonna have different colors on it. But the main focus of this is I would like to display some beautiful hardwood figure on my desk at work for a nice conversation piece. So I've got two slabs here and I wanna take one of them, hopefully this one, and basically cut off a section about yay big and then resin cast the front of this with epoxy so it will be a flat clear front and reserve the natural look of the wood and hopefully disperse the light of the LEDs nice and evenly around it. I began this project by cutting the portion of the wood that I wanted out of the slab using my jigsaw. Now there was quite a bit of portions of this wood that were slightly rotted, so I used some Minwax wood hardener to harden everything up. Basically this smells like a very diluted CA glue, so I think all it's doing is just stabilizing that wood. I soaked a ton of that stuff into the wood and then let it set for a few days and it was hard as a rock. Now using this technique to flatten this slab I understand is a little bit of overkill, but I wanted to practice the technique before I use this on much larger, more expensive slabs. So I'm going to be using a router sled to flatten both sides of this slab before moving on with the project. I used two pieces of two inch square tubing to get my flat reference service and then a one and a half inch flat router bit that I got on Amazon, link in the description below if anybody is interested with my two horsepower rigid router to flatten everything up. I gotta say, this is an absolutely disgusting mess, even for this tiny little slab. Look at all that dust in the air. So I don't know what I'm gonna do when I'm flattening some 10 foot slabs later on. Once the slab was completely flattened, it was time to build a form around that, and I did this using 3 quarter inch melamine. This video is sponsored by Sawblade.com. Visit their website for a full line of woodworking and metalworking blades and machinery. I applied some paste wax to the inside of the form so that I would have an easy release from the epoxy. Cleaned up the slab and then assembled the form using hot glue. Well, I agree with you that this is an absolutely terrible spot to pour epoxy in the house, but it is simply too cold out in the shop and I don't want to heat that up to over 70 degrees to be able to pour this epoxy. It's about 71, 72 in this room right now, and this epoxy is asking for 75, but it's simply not going to happen. So we're going to give it a whirl and we will see what happens. On the first larger pour of the epoxy, I just eyeballed the amounts that I put in of both the resin and the hardener and it worked out very well. Later on when I was mixing smaller portions, I did weigh the epoxy. Probably not necessary, but I wanted to make sure that the epoxy set up nice and hard. The recommended pour of this epoxy is 1 8 of an inch. I did pour a little bit thicker than that, but I still had to do several pours to fill up the form. one relatively small pour after this. Getting close. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! A quick pass through the planer saved me a ton of time sanding off the epoxy on either side of the piece. 
Once that was all cleaned up, I used some blue painter's tape to make a dam on either side of the piece so that I could pour some epoxy in the final portions near the back that didn't get reached on the first couple pours. And then it was on to the sanding. I started with 60 and moved my way right up to 320 using the orbital sander and then I moved on to hand sanding with 600 and 2000 grit. Hey, getting some on the wood. You don't care if it's on the wood? I do. It'll survive. Why do you have to get this wet? Finally, I used some polish with a buffing wheel on my drill to shine that epoxy right up and it turned out fantastic. Some of you might question the bubbles in the epoxy, but I was going for this as I was hoping this would look like a seascape. I would have preferred not have the line of bubbles between the pores, but practice makes perfect. At this point we got the epoxy poured, squared off the edges, polished everything up, so this is looking really good. Now the way I'm going to light this is with these RGB LEDs, and I've already soldered a transition onto here so that it goes up and back again so that I get an offset pattern of light which looks really cool when we have this lit up. Now I want to wrap it around the edge as much as possible and I will tuck the controller down on one side over here and then out the back. And the way I'm going to cover this is with these strips of cherry that have a groove in the top that I've dadoed out and those are going to clip right over the top and I will try to CA glue those in place to the epoxy and onto the sides with a nice miter on them. I glued the lights into place so that I could put on the molding using some hot glue. Just need to be very careful where you bend the lights around the epoxy so that you don't bend it right over one of the LEDs. Yeah, you like that? Yeah. There. And I used some CA glue with activator to hold the molding in place. And to finish the wood, I put on a few coats of General Finish's Armor Seal Semi-Gloss. Just be careful when putting this over epoxy, at least in my case, when I was having the piece vertical, it did tend to make the Armor Seal drip a little bit. I actually had to sand off the epoxy and polish it up again to remove the visible drips on the epoxy. Well, that is a wrap on the epoxy LED light, and holy smokes, this thing is cool. The camera does not do it justice. This thing is totally mesmerizing to just sit there and look at. Unfortunately, there's no plans for anything like this. If you guys would like to build something like this, you'll just have to watch the video a couple times because each piece of wood is going to be unique to itself. Unfortunately, the miters didn't come out as well as I would have liked, but that is not the point of this piece. The point is to have this beautiful piece of cherry with all the grain and the see-through epoxy that kind of looks like a seascape, especially with the LEDs and the bubbles in the epoxy, which is what I was going for. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was super, super fun to make. Very happy with how this turned out. If you did enjoy this, please hammer that thumbs up button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button right over here so you never miss when we upload a new video. I'm DIY Tyler, and you guys have a good one.